Now let's talk in depth about clips. Just like we have MIDI tracks and audio tracks, we also have MIDI clips and audio clips. To get started right away, go to this clip category and start dragging stuff in. If I drag this one in, it's going to bring along with it an instrument or a device. And then if I double click on it, I can show the MIDI that's in that clip. Okay, vice versa, I can do an audio clip with an audio track. So if I go to samples, that's a one shot, but we want a loop, so let's search. Here I have a drum loop, and I'm going to drag that to an audio track. Now if I ever want to create a new track, I can also drag directly to this area here. I'm going to create a new track for me and drop that clip on there. Now from here, let's talk about launching clips. I can hit the play button, also known as the launch button. Whoa, mama. And launch those clips. And they're going to launch in time, according to this global quantize. So just like when we browsed for things in the browser, all of these clips are going to come in on the downbeat, because that's what this is set to, one bar. I stopped transport with my spacebar. I can also start transport with my spacebar. We'll talk about this in detail later. But notice as I push play and push stop, these clips remain active. So if I hit play, they start playing. This is doing nothing because it's not active. If I want to deactivate or stop these clips, I can use a stop button. There's also a stop button down here. Or I can launch all the clips in a scene. We'll talk about that later as well. Or I can stop all clips. And notice they all come in and stop according to this global quantize amount. Also, we can only have one clip in a track playing at a time. If I hit play on that top clip and then launch the second clip, going to wait to the downbeat, but it's going to stop the other clip from playing. Again, only one clip can play per track. And we've been working with loops here, which means these clips play over and over and over again. So watch down here. When it gets to the end of the clip, it's going to start all over again. So there are two different types of clips, a loop or a one-shot. And right away, we can tell which one's playing, what type is playing, by this indicator down here at the bottom. If it's a loop, we're going to see the status of that clip. It starts over again. We have a couple different numbers. The number on the left tells us the number of times this clip has played. It's ticking up. On the right, it's going to tell us the length of this clip in beats. Now, we found a one-shot early on. I didn't use it, but let's find something again. We can go kick, and there it is. If I drop that one-shot on here, now this is completely different. I hit play, and it's done after it's played. Let's see if we can find something a little bit longer. There we go, a little bit longer. Now it's so long, in fact, Ableton Live decided to loop it. So we're gonna get down to all this fun stuff in a later video, but this is how you turn on and off looping per clip. So I turn it off, watch what happens. Plays once and stops. So now this indicator has changed from that pie graph to a bar that indicates the length of time left in the clip, counting down until it stops. And this works exactly the same with a MIDI clip. We can see this one is on its first time playing through, and it's 16 beats long. It's gonna start a second time through. I can also turn off loop for this if I want to. 
And if I hit play, we can see it has eight seconds, seven seconds left until this clip is done playing. And that's it as far as an introduction to clips. In the next video, we're going to take a look at session view versus arrangement view. We're going to talk about the differences and how to use them. I'll see you then.